Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we are going to talk about transfer elements. First I'm going to describe what a transfer element is and then I'm going to describe why we are using it eh? and what preconditions we have to meet to be able to use it. Eh? So we're talking about transfer element right now. Eh? So what is a transfer element? A transfer element is some sort of system. Huh? Here is our system. This system does have a certain number of inputs. Okay, so there are some things which do influence the system, or some some things which will go into the system. Huh? So there's an xi1 can be time variant. Huh? xi2, xi3 and xim. Huh? So a number of inputs simply are influencing the system. And the system is reacting and is producing a number of outputs. So there are output values as well of the system. Can also be a number of outputs. And we call them XO1, XO2 over output, XO3, yeah, also be a number, XO n. Yeah? Must not be the same number, n and m. Yeah? So this is a system, or this is a transfer element. The system now is, in our system theory, the system now is representing a transfer element. So all inputs here, yeah? all inputs are transferred somehow to the output. So the inputs are influencing the outputs and the system can be seen as some sort of transfer element which the values from the input will be transferred to values from the output. And now let's come back to this control engineering here. Yeah? If we take a look at the control or control system, we can think about this as a transfer element. Yeah? The control system has as input something yeah, and the correcting variable and as output the control variable. Yeah? And the controller has as input the controller deviation and as output the correcting variable. Yeah? If I look into this as transfer elements, I could handle this control engineering with the help of transfer elements. And those transfer elements, yeah, those system theory of, of transfer elements, they are, this is pretty good developed. Yeah? And this enables us to handle yeah, all possible control systems with the help of this system theory. Yeah? I now tell you some restrictions of this, of this system theory. Yeah? There are some preconditions which need to be met by the system, by the transfer element that it can be handled by this system theory. Yeah. And we'll see they have some impact in reality. Yeah. One precondition or one item, or one st stuff, yeah, which the system needs to fulfill, it must be linear. Yeah. So we want to have a so-called linear system. What is a linear system? Linear system means that everything which is happening inside the system is, is just scaled. Yeah? So this means if I have some sort of input here, we will see a certain form of output. Yeah? If I have the same form of input here, but double the size, I have the same form of output, but also double the size. So it's just linear. Double input, double output, triple input, triple output, and so on. Yeah? 
So the system actually is reacting always the same way. If the input is jumping to one position, then the output is doing its stuff. If the input is jumping to double the size, yeah, the output is looking exactly the same, but scaled. Yeah? Also doubled in size. Yeah? But from time and so on, this looks everything looks the same. Yeah? So this is a linear system. A linear system always reacts in the same way, but scaled. Okay? So always reacts in the same way. but scaled. Okay? Same, same, but different. <laughs> Always reacts in the same way, but scaled. 10% per input, 10% per output. Yeah? We know in reality this is not always the case. Yeah? Let's think about your car. Yeah? Let's think about your car. We want to control we want to control the, the speed of the car. Yeah? So, if we are climbing up a hill to maintain the speed, we need to accelerate. Or we don't really need to accelerate, but we had to push the, the accelerator pedal. Yeah? Because simply we need more power to climb this hill and then our speed will remain constant. Okay? If I double my pushing efforts to the pedal, yeah? then we could also double the output, the power output. Yeah? This is only working until I reach the metal, pedal to the metal, yeah? full throttle. There is nothing more. I can hit the, the acceleration pedal until it extends and that's it. Yeah? Up to there I may be linear, yeah? but starting there boop, I reached a certain limit. Yeah? Then we are outside linear. Yeah? Then we cannot handle this as a transfer element. Hmm? However, the only thing we must be we must be aware of this. Okay? So we can do like we have unlimited power yeah? and then think about what is happening if I do not have this. Yeah? So we are calculating like we have no restriction. Yeah? And afterwards, we try to tweak in a little bit restrictions and so on. How this is working, we will see. Yeah. Or maybe there are then techniques with anti wind up and so we will see this. Yeah. So, linear system. Right? This is one prerequisite to the system, which is not always met in reality, yeah? but only with some limitations, like I said. Yeah. So we could use this uh, system theory knowing, okay, it is a good tool, but in reality it looks like a little bit different. Yeah? This means we cannot cover the reality with this. Yeah? We have to live with this. Second prerequisite of this system is that it shall be reactionless. Okay? So it shall be a reactionless system. What does this mean again? Reactionless. I mean, I want to have a reaction. I just said there is some input, so the system is reacting with some output. Yeah, that's true. Yeah? And this doesn't mean reactionless. Yeah? Reactionless means if the output is changing, it does not have any influence on the input. Okay? So there's no backfiring inside the system. So if there is a loop somewhere out, like here, yeah? If we look at the control system, we are changing the controlled variable. Outside here, yeah, there is a loop, yeah, and we are the inputs are influenced, this is okay. But if we only look at the control system and just because this controlled variable is growing, let's say, also the control the correcting variable is growing, just because of this behavior of the system, then it's not reactionless. Yeah? Reactionless is the backfiring of an output to the input inside the system. 
Outside stuff is not mentioned here. Yeah? Inside the system, the system has to be designed in a way that the output, regardless of how big or how small it is, yeah, does not, not influence any sort of input. Okay? So there is no backfiring. Yeah? So outputs do not have influence on inputs. Huh? Is this always fulfilled? Can tell you also not. <laughs> What's a, what shall it, huh? uh, one example. Yeah? Let's think about our house. Yeah? Outside it's cold, yeah? so we have to heat it up. Yeah? We're starting a fire, or no, hopefully you have a proper heater. Yeah? So we heat it up with, with, our, with our heater. So if we have the control system now is our house, yeah? with the temperature inside and so on, and the inputs are the correcting variable. This is now me heating up. Yeah? And uh, the disturbances, this is the outside temperature, which is getting cold. Okay? And the output is the room temperature. So if I'm now heating up my house and my room temperature is climbing, yeah, I do directly influence the disturbance signal yeah, because outside my, my, my house, you know, it's, it's, there is a little bit heat which will travel through the walls and get outside and will heat up the surroundings of my house. Yeah. So it's no, since I'm heating up the inside, it's not that cold outside anymore, okay? So this is not reactionless because I change something at the output and the input is directly influenced by the output. This is what I mean with reactionless system. Yeah? Why we are using it anyway? Yeah? Because, I mean, you know, it depends a little bit how much is this reaction of the input. Yeah? I mean, if it's the house, if it's cold outside, it's cold outside, okay? Just because I'm heating up a little bit, you know, it's so minor impact, it does not really influence. Yeah? However, we have to be aware that those are the limitations and that we are not meeting those limitations in reality. And whatever we calculate with our system theory yeah, is only in a theoretical, idealized way. And in reality, we need to tweak the findings a little bit. We need to tune in reality. This we will not get around this because reality is simply too complex to be to be looked at. So now, system. System is transferring the inputs to the outputs. Next time we are going to talk about how we can describe, describe a system in a mathematical way. Yeah? How we can describe, how we can map inputs to outputs. Then we realize it's differential equation. So next time differential equations. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, now it's getting to the core of it. Yeah? To make it not that complicated, we will limit our inputs and outputs to exactly one. But you see, it's a common differential equation can be quite complicated enough. But this is the next video. For now, it's enough. Let's say thank you very much for listening. And goodbye. <laughs>